on the 19th day of October, Halloween gave to me 19 Richards cheesing, 18 undead drains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincent's cracking, 15 Lee's counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey everybody, happy Monday. It is October 19th, the 19th day of our 31 days of Halloween here on Legion Podcast. Uh, as always, thank you for uh, tuning in and listening to me yap about what I've been watching, what I think maybe you ought to be watching. And so we launched yesterday a little bit of a zombie thing. And uh, we started with uh, Train to Busan. And we're continuing that with... Zack Snyder's remake of Dawn of the Dead. And so why this versus the original, aside from the fact that I've seen the original, oh, I don't know, about 54,000 times, it's that I I hadn't seen this one in a while, and I wanted to go back to it in light of perhaps recently changing my opinion of Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. Uh, and by recently, I just mean over the course of the past you know, a few movies he's done, a lot of the DC stuff, I, I think is uh, quite bad. I think that since Sucker Punch, and I don't mean Sucker Punch is good, I mean, like, starting with Sucker Punch, he started to make really, really terrible movies. You know, some people really like him. Like, I, I'm a big fan of Watchmen still, so I don't think he's an accidental good director like Eli Roth is. I just think I don't necessarily like everything he's doing. I know a lot of people love those DC movies uh, that he directs. I think they're uh, kind of terrible, but uh, I don't begrudge anyone who enjoys them, you know? Um, and so I wanted to go back and kind of test myself and see if uh, perhaps my feelings about those, uh, you know, Justice League movies and whatnot had colored my perception of Dawn of the Dead, which I remember seeing in the theater and thinking to myself, boy, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. And the more I thought about it and then watched it subsequently, I was like, you know, this is pretty good. Like, it's not it's not the original. You have to kind of separate the two because the original is, uh, you know, much more of an independent film and, and has uh, these sharp critiques of consumerism. And, uh, you know, the, this movie nods to that. Uh, the the Zack Snyder remake, but it it's not all that concerned with trying to say something about the nature of society and uh, that sort of thing. It is it's just not what it's there for. It's an action horror movie, and as such, uh, they speed up the zombies. They're not shuffling anymore, much like Train to Busan. These are fast moving zombies, although not as uh, collective in their their danger as perhaps uh, the ones in Train to Busan. Um, and, and not as fast acting an infection, uh, thank goodness, but it, what it does, it does really well, you know, it, it's not setting out to, to be that social commentary. It's not setting out to be an overlong, uh, uh, you know, pondering kind of film and it serves up some pretty good characters, uh, you know, n nothing overly complicated, but you know, th this is also helped out a whole lot by the fact that Sarah Polly is really good as the lead. Ving Rhames is fun. Jake Weber, I think, is kind of the secret weapon of the movie who really brings that kind of grounding influence to the film. Um, I think he's very, very good in it. Um, and then, you know, Ty Burrell steals a lot of the film. Uh, because he's just kind of the asshole, you know, and it's fun to be the asshole and he does a great job with it. My, my absolute favorite thing, uh, that he says is there's a moment where, uh, everyone complains about as they're preparing to make their big escape that he doesn't do anything. And his reaction to it is, well, uh, captain never works with this crew. You guys have a good one. 
and then strolls off and he's he's just a, a wonderful asshole like he's a great guy to root against and ultimately when he meets his fate you couldn't be happier that this knucklehead has has gotten his comeuppance and you know he's not quite at the level of say uh, a a Paul Reiser from Aliens that Burke character. It's not quite that infuriating, but it's not not that infuriating. Um, so yeah, it, it all that is fun. Um, and the zombie stuff is great. You know, it it's fast and it's vicious, and maybe some of the CGI is a little thin, but you know, it it, it benefits greatly. I think. Um, from a real fun sense of, of pace, like it, it really moves and you feel like you are kind of in the action most of the time in that movie. Um, there are pauses as, as there should be, um, where you kind of stop and, and take in the surroundings. And again, I think Jake Weber does a great job in, uh, in, in kind of, uh, making all of this seem not only reasonable, but something that, hey, if we just work together, we're going to get out of this. Um, worth pointing out that the screenplay comes from, you know, Hollywood superstar now, James Gunn. Uh, and, you know, you can't, it's not that this feels like a James Gunn movie because Zack Snyder very much has his own visual style. And But I think the marriage of James Gunn's kind of uh, a sense of, of, of wit and self-referential nature, but not to the point of being self-parody, uh, that, that there's a, a kind of a careful line uh, that they walk. And I think that coupled with uh, Snyder's imagery really works. And it, it's one of those things I wish Zack Snyder worked with better writers because I think he is certainly capable of making good movies, uh, but has just chosen material that I don't think is, is all that good. Um, but yeah, so the Zack Snyder, uh, Dawn of the Dead is, is kind of a great movie watching it again. I, not only was I reminded of this, it really, uh, I, I found it thrilling and funny and, and, you know, pleasantly gory at times. And yeah, some of the CG gets in the way of, of some of that enjoyment, but I can let that stuff go for the sake of, uh, enjoying the story and, and the, the sort of the magic of filmmaking, right? Like you don't, you don't have to prove to me that your zombies are real. Uh, just make the characters and the story such that, you know, when I see something a little dodgy, I can be like, yeah, 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 that's fine. Let's keep going. What's that? What happens next? And, and maybe that's the thing. Like Dawn of the Dead is a, a great example of, uh, a movie that never really lets off the pedal long enough for you to stop asking what's hap uh, what's going to happen next. Um, it's a great zombie movie. Uh, you know, two fast zombies in a row. Sorry about that, but, uh. You know, just the nature of things. Uh, the the zombie has evolved in cinema, and uh, most of them are fast these days. So, at any rate, that is our film for the day, Dawn of the Dead, uh, from the year of our Lord, 2004? 2004, he confirms. And, uh, and, and anyway, if you get a chance to watch it, let me know. You can reach me at Bo at Legion Podcast. That's B-O at Legion Podcasts dot com. Uh, let me know how you're enjoying the Halloween season, how you're enjoying these shows, what you're doing. Uh, I'm excited to be uh, heading into the final stretch of Halloween. It has been uh, a great deal of fun. There are still some really good movies to discuss, as well as uh, the 31st. The, the What am I watching on Halloween night? Uh, and and I'm going to tell you that that day. And, uh, and, and we'll have a little fun with it. So um, anyway, have a great start to your week, everybody. Have a spooky Monday. And I'll see you back here on Tuesday for uh, another film in our 31 Days of Halloween.